Welcome to Blood, Bath & Beyond. Today we review the super micro budget horror film, Massage Parlor of Death, where nobody gets a happy ending. <laughs> <laughs> Written, produced, edited, and directed by Richard Mogg, starring Michelle Kavit. Massage Parlor of Death is about a deranged masseuse who kills all of her patients to resurrect her lover. So what do we like about this movie? I really like the commitment to the cause. <laughs> this guy, Richard Mogg, he sought out to make a shot on video horror film and he did it very, very well. He shot it with an HD camera, he burned it to a DVD and then recorded it onto his VCR just to make sure that it looked super gritty. I think it looked exactly like 80s movies. When we looked on the back, we're like, there's no way this is done last year. <laughs> mm -hmm. And it certainly was. It came out in 2015. This film was just people getting killed on a massage bed. It's one of these few films where it is what it says, and it's just so cheesy. It's awesome. I personally like the cover art of the film. You can pick out certain events that were depicted through the film on the cover. We bought this in LA because of the cover and we found out it was a Canadian film because they were using Canadian currency. <laughs> yeah. Saw those sweet green 20s. <laughs> I think I saw a nice purple 10 in there. Right. Mm -hmm. It was $50 to get sex in this film. <laughs> uh, which was the actually the budget of this <laughs> film. And so watching the behind the scenes was actually really nice because we learned that this whole movie took place over a weekend because the main actress was only around on the weekend for two days and he had 50 bucks he's just like I'm gonna use all my old ass props and I'm gonna use ketchup and Kool-Aid for blood <laughs> and, and, toilet pa paper. and toilet paper <laughs> because he was saying like give some consistency you know <laughs> so he was giving tips for filmmakers which is pretty cool so check out the DVD extras actually another thing I liked about it was within that budget I think he spent at least half of it on the massage table the camping cot. He, he left a tip. Make sure you keep the receipt so just in case <laughs> you do need some money back, you just return it. I absolutely loved every single person who came to get a massage in this film because their characters were so over the top, they were hilarious. Gordon, the first person who comes in. Oh yeah. I am uh, here for the massage. Oh yes, come on in. And it really set the tone for, like, the quality of movie we are about to watch. So now on to our favorite kills. <laughs> My favorite kill is definitely the one blonde girl who comes in. She walks in, gets a massage, and we get the biggest, weirdest <laughs> black hatchet. There's this rubber head mask that looks nothing like her. That just gets cut right off. It was on screen and it was practical. It was definitely very, very low budget. <laughs> yep. And it looked fairly <laughs> shitty. It was quality nonetheless. <laughs> My favorite death had to be this scrawny preteen looking Asian boy. That's so he's it. trying to get himself prepped. So you just see him under the, the blanket just burp, 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 burp. And then all of a sudden Michelle Kavit's character comes out and then stabs him in the chest and then pulls out his heart and then starts chewing on it like a crazy bitch. My favorite kill is the best kill in this entire movie when Michelle Kavit's character is just going through Haiti and this native comes in and they have a standoff fight with a stick. She eventually grabs the stick and then throws it and then the next shot is the stick in his stomach as he's holding it and he just falls down and dies. <laughs> <laughs> I might say that that was the best kill in any movie we've ever seen, yes. ever. Now what didn't we like? I wasn't a huge fan of the cinematography. Most of the movie, you'd be looking at somebody and the camera would zoom in or zoom out. And it's a little distracting. I, I get it and it was funny, but it was a little overdone for the 80s video effect. It, it drove me nuts a little. The acting wasn't top-notch in this film. A lot of the times it's bad when we can actually see the people reading the script in their laps. <laughs> and it's even worse when they're supposed to be reading out of a book. You could have just wrote the lines in the book and made it not as obvious. <laughs> the music, holy Christ, it was just excruciating. It was like 8-bit tones. It tickles your abdula and you just want to fucking punch somebody because it just rings at that high pitch. It was like a montage of walking through a graveyard. So we had nothing nice to look at 
And nothing nice to hear. Yeah, it's yeah. like, so there's like actual points in this movie where you're just like, well, I'd rather do everything else. <laughs> yeah. I'd rather go eat a fucking tomato. Now it's time for final thoughts and ratings. This movie surprised me in many ways, both good and bad. I was surprised at how hilarious it was. I was disappointed in the fact that there was no nudity and the kills were not what I thought they were gonna be whatsoever. But it was still an enjoyable film. I feel you guys are definitely gonna love the cheesiness and that 80s, 90s feel for horror. It was great, it was funny, and I was entertained. So that being said, I'm gonna give this film three making love to air flutes out of five. It was a pretty good time. We were cracking up like, ex like the entire fucking time. I wanted to see a lot more gruesome deaths, but for the $50 budget that it had, I think they did a stellar job. Richard Mogg definitely nailed it. I love that he went back and he did an 80s style movie in 2013 or 2014. And when people are doing these 80s movies, you should take some notes. So I'm gonna give this two masseuses that love eating tomatoes <laughs> out of five. <laughs> this film, you get more of a appreciation if you could get a behind the scenes. If you could just see that type of material after you watch the whole film, you get a definite understanding and a better appreciation of like what you just witnessed. I found it more hilarious than it was a horror. So I would have to give this film three sacred blown bubble wands out of five. As always, thank you for watching. Like this video, and if you've seen it, let us know in the comments below. If you have a chance to see it, we recommend it. If you like what you've seen here today, please subscribe to the channel to stay updated with everything we're doing here on Bloodbath and Beyond.